This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Good morning. Hope you have a good weekend. So we discussed about output impedance of degenerated stage. I have derived the expression uh, in the last lecture by putting this side positive, the input side, this side positive, this side negative, or you can reverse, you will get the same result. So what we have shown is uh, when we have degeneration, when we have emitter degeneration, then what is happening is your output impedance with early effect is not just RO, but you got RO plus GM RO into RE parallel R5. See, so your output impedance is boosted when you connect this RE. So when RE equal to zero, entire thing will disappear, you get your value RO, output impedance. But then when you connect the RE, your output impedance is boosted. And then you have got two scenarios, one is RE, then again you can vary the value of RE. When you have more RE, greater than R pi, that is your input impedance, then what will happen is uh, in this parallel combination, the, the, the R pi will predominate because that is a lower value. And then you will get, uh, that is equal to beta times RO. See, still you are getting not just RO, RO is equal to beta times RO. See, if you choose a big value for RE, then your output impedance is uh, 
beta times r of like current you are multiplying with beta same way your output impedance is multiplied by beta means 100 times more than the previous value your beta is maybe 100 then if r is less than r pi if you connect a very small r e then still you are getting some kind of uh, bigger value 1 plus gm r e into r of see this much increment you will be getting so this is a Maybe you can draw like this, so that you know that you have to take into account the early effects. In order to remember, when you do the calculations, you have to take into account the early effects, because this is V a less than infinity. So emitter degeneration boosts the output impedance by a factor of 1 plus gm into R e parallel R pi, which we already saw. So from here, that is the reason we have rearranged it, so which is equal to R o into 1 plus gm into r e parallel r pi so this much it will boost this improves the gain of the amplifier and makes the circuit a better current source which i already discussed when you design a current source if you have got a very high output impedance then that is uh, you are getting a flat curve means your current is not changing by varying the voltage so degeneration by another transistor so here we have connected r e a resistor for degeneration then we can also do this degeneration by replacing this uh, resistor with a transistor that is the reason degeneration by another transistor so this is a input uh, uh, signal v in and then this is your transistor q1 then r out then this is re then we have got expression for uh, r out so this is expression for r out then what we can do is we can replace this re with another transistor if we replace re with another transistor that is called a cascode circuit then what is the significance of cascode circuit so cascode circuit is used in uh, integrated circuits so when you design a chip most of the time what will do what they will do what they will be doing is they don't use a resistor they will re they will get the same effect using a transistor because in the chip it is very easy to fabricate transistors and then sometimes what will happen is if you need a very high value for the resistor then you need more area and uh, uh, in the chip but if you replace that with a transistor then the area the space requirement is less then there are some other advantages that we will study later so in the chip most of the time your resistor you will not put a resistor rather you will connect a transistor and then get the effect of a resistor then how can you get here the resistance how can you get that effect because here this is your circuit then here I have connected maybe DC value and then here also I have connected a constant DC value. So in that case, see your Q2, when I connect Q2 here with early effect, what is the R equivalent here? So if I don't, if I, I do take into account the early effect, means we are not emitting early effect. We take into account the early effect. So my question is instead of R E, what you will get here? R of because R of 2, R of 2 of Q2 because this is equivalent of R out and then uh, you got the transistor Q1 and then you are getting R of 2. So in order to understand in a better way I can draw and show you. See you got uh, Q1 and Q2, so you can see on the left side. Then I'm going to draw the small signal. My aim is finding out the output impedance. So when I want to find out the output impedance, then what we have to do is, so you got Q1, and then you got Q2. So this is Q2, this is Q1, and then this is your uh, R out. Then you got DC. So these are the constant DC voltages, VB2, maybe VB1. Then when I want to find out output impedance, the rule is I have to connect a test voltage source. So I'll be connecting a test voltage source here. So that is Vx and then Ix current is going in. Second rule is I have to short the input. So when I short the input, I can show you. So Q1, Q1 is the R pi 1 and then here I'm going to connect grounded because this is anyway DC source. But then by rule, this anyway it will be grounded because this is a DC source, we have to ground it. But then because we are finding out R out, Again, we have to ground it. So anyway, this will be ground. Then what you are getting is, uh, see, your Q1. So this is a Q1 part. Then you are getting a current source. Then you are getting a RO1. 
and then this is your test voltage source. So Vx and then this is a Ix. Ix current is going. Then from the emitter, you can see from the emitter, you are connecting to the collector part. So again, input here it is grounded. So emitter is grounded, this is R pi 2. If I connect here positive, negative, then I am getting a current source here. See, this is R of 2. And then this is a GM1, maybe V pi 1, because this is a V pi 1. And then here is a V pi 2. So here it is GM V pi 2. Then, now we got the small signal. So when you look at this small signal, my question is, uh, what is the value of GM V pi 2? This one. From this diagram, what is the value I can put in for GM V pi 2? So what is the input here, V pi 2? V pi 2, what do you think? Do you get any V pi 2 here? Yeah, yeah, because here it is ground, here it is ground. So no current will be flowing. So that actually you don't get any voltage drop here because this is ground, this is ground. Between two grounds, you don't have a current flow so that you don't have any voltage. So that this will be gone and then this will be zero. Then what you will be getting, you see, you are getting only R of 2. So that is the reason in the small signal, you got this is a ground, then you got R pi 1 and then you are getting a, the current source, then R of 1 and then you are getting a test voltage source, Vx, then Ix is going in, and then this is your R pi 1. And then here, down, now I don't have to take into account this one, because this is anyway 0, and then you are getting the effect of only R of 2. See? So that's the reason in the slide we have shown in the drawing, we have taken into account only R of 2. So this is equivalent of uh, R out and putting an R of 2. There is no other effect. Then R out, which is equal to 1 plus GM1. So we are going to substitute in the equation 1 plus GM1 R of 2 parallel R pi 1. Because now you are what you are doing is instead of R e, you are going to substitute R of 2. And then R of 1. Instead of R of, you are putting R of 1. Then, then now we will be discussing is uh, analysis by inspection. Analysis by inspection is sometimes what people do is uh, they don't draw the small signal. Rather by looking at the circuit diagram, they can say that, okay, this is ground and then you can do something like that. So you don't have to do analysis by inspection. If you are not happy or if you, if you think that a small signal is a much better way of uh, understanding, I would recommend doing a small signal not by analysis by inspection. So uh, analysis by inspection, the meaning is you got the circuit then I will not draw the, this is a small signal. So you got the R pi, this is a V pi, then this is R e, then G M V pi between this collector and the emitter, then you got R C, constant DC voltage, that is grounded, then this is a V out. So analysis by inspection is, uh, you don't draw this one. Instead of that, you just make modification in your circuit. So that the analysis by inspection, you will say that, oh, this is a constant DC voltage, I will be grounding, see, you have grounded and then here you have grounded. Then this is a V out. Then you try to write down the equation. That is called analysis by inspection. This is useful when you are kind of, you know, finding out some circuit, you combine together what is the effect. Yes, analysis by inspection is uh, good. But if you want to find out R out, you can't, you know, use analysis by inspection. So just, you know, mentioned in the text, but it is useful in some context. Uh, you want to see how many resistors are coming in parallel. Okay, then you, maybe you can do analysis by inspection and you quickly make a decision. Yeah, yeah, these resistance are coming in parallel. That type of information you can get, but for deriving the small signal parameters, analysis by inspection is not much useful. Yeah, then you might ask an example. Maybe when I say an example, maybe that will be clear. So we already discussed in the previous lectures, you can find out the voltage gain of a transistor. You can derive the small signal. Then, so this is your transistor. And then, uh, so this is VCC, and then this is your V out, this is your V in. Then you, are, you know that gain equal to minus GM into RC. So this is RC. Then we again said, uh, when we connect a potential divider here, R1, maybe this is R1, R2, still you get the same gain. Then immediately you want to check. 
then you don't have to draw the full small, small, small signal. What you can do is you can do analysis by inspection. In the analysis by inspection, when you draw it, see, you got RC, this is your VCC, this is your RC, then, then what you do is from here, your R1, where is R1 going to? Ground, R2, already grounded. See, this is your V in. Then you can understand, yeah, the V in is not going to change. Because if the, here it is a 0.7 volt, then here also it will be 0.7 volt. Then when you have a only a transistor, then same RC, VCC, then ground, then you connect here V in. That's equal to 0.7 volt. So this is 0.7 volt. When you connect this R1 and R2, still you will get 0.7 volt. Why? Because here still you get 0.7 volt because these two are coming in parallel. You know what I mean? Then you can do analysis by inspection. You don't have to f draw the full small signal to understand this concept. See, the, what I said is you got, see, 0.7 volt is coming from a source. This is your 0.7 volt, then you got your R5. Okay, so this is your V in. 0.7 volt, so that is this equivalent. See, this is equivalent of like this. But then, when you connect two resistances, here what you are doing is still you got 0.7 volt, then you got R5, then you will be getting R1 in parallel, see, R2 in parallel, but still you get 0.7 volt here, you know what I mean? So in order to understand, because these are all are coming in parallel, if you got 0.7 volt here, still you will get 0.7 volt here. And then, so in order to understand, you don't need to draw the full small signal. Rather, you can just use analysis by instruction to understand the concept. So that's the use of analysis by instruction. So this one is a gain minus RC by 1 by GM plus RE, which we already derived. R in input impedance, R pi plus beta plus 1 into RE, because when you connect RE, again you are increasing the input impedance by <coughs> beta plus 1 times RE. So when you connect your capacitor, coupling capacitor, with capacitor which already design, we discussed, when you connect a coupling capacitor, what will happen? The signal will go through the capacitor because of the small impedance and the DC, will, DC current, the emitter current will be going through the RE, which we already discussed in the previous lecture. And then, uh, then we know that the RE will not be coming into picture in the small signal. The small signal capacitor is a short. And then that's the reason gain equal to minus GM into RC. So these things we can immediately understand by analysis by inspection. Like, you know, you got the circuit, then I want to find out what is the gain or what is the effect of this capacitor in the small signal. Then immediately you don't have to draw uh, the entire small signal. Then you can put a short. Yeah, in this circuit I can write it. See, RC I can ground it. See, RC I can ground it. Then from here a short to the ground so that you don't have RE, see? So this became like this. Then usually I can say, yeah, that is correct equal to minus GM into RC. So this type, you know, understanding or cube check, you can use analysis by instruction. Yeah, here R in equal to R pi, because when you short your RE with the capacitor in the small signal, you don't have the RE. Then when you don't have the RE, then you don't have this term, beta plus one into RE. So your input impedance will become R pi. Then, now we are going back to the biasing. So this was a bad biasing. Why? Because example of a bad biasing. So what I did is I got a transistor. Then I connected RC directly to this one. So I got RC. I am deriving some VCC. I connected directly. Then I have connected a microphone here. So what is the problem with this one? So how many of you think that this, this is operating in the active region? So in the previously, this is a pre modification of a previous case which we discussed. So this is your uh, VCC, RC, V out, then this is I have grounded. Then what we did is we connected a microphone directly here. Do you remember? See, have, we have connected a microphone directly. Then this was not a good strategy, why? Because here when you connect your microphone directly, you are getting maybe millivolt signal and then that this junction is not forward biasing. Here you got maybe VCC equal to maybe 6 volt you are connecting. Maybe here you got a reverse bias, but then you don't have a forward bias. So this was not good. 
Then we came up with a different biasing, uh, biasing techniques. In one biasing techniques, what we said is uh, you can have uh, the resistor RC here, then this is your V out, then you can connect another resistor from here, then you, you are getting a forward bias, you are tapping some voltage, then you can connect your uh, maybe microphone, maybe something like this here, then you can getting the bias. But then now what we did is here, you got the ground, then you got the RCC, this is your VCC, RC, this is your V out. Then what I did is I just shorted these two together. Maybe this is equal to, yeah, maybe I can put 2 volt. And then I have connected the microphone here. So what is the problem with this one? Why we can't connect like this? So if you short to the voltage source, that is correct. Then my next, then I've got another question for you. What will happen? Yeah. So then, uh, so when what what happens is the voltage source by definition is uh, it can provide ideal voltage source can provide infinite current and keep voltage constant. Ideal current source can keep current constant irrespective of whatever the voltage you vary. Means your power supply is an example. Your power supply is not an ideal voltage source, but then they make it as much as ideal characters it you got. So power supply means you got a power supply, then they will say that uh, the current limit is there. Maybe you can get 5 volt, then they will say 12 amps is the maximum current. So if you try to take more than 12 amps, then this voltage will come down. But if you are operating within this 12 amps, then this voltage is a constant. So ideal voltage source is something like uh, it will keep the voltage try to constant and uh, then as he said, because you are shorting to the voltage source, here the fluctuations are very, very small from the microphone, the voltage signal, and then this voltage signal will be killed by this constant voltage here. This voltage source will make sure that fluctuations are very less here. You know what I meant? So that. Uh, we can't connect it. But that's the reason we, if you connect a resistor, then it, it is kind of isolating this voltage source from the signal. So that is a better way. So then you might think how resistor will help. Just to put R equal to infinity. So if you put R equal to infinity, means you are isolating this part from this part completely. But then you don't want to isolate completely, then you don't get a bias. Rather, you connect a big value so that you are getting a kind of isolation between this point and this point. So this is an example of a bad biasing. We will not do this one because we are shorting to the voltage source. And then that is the reason we connected a resistance RB and then uh, uh, we are getting a VB, we derive it, then this RB is kind of providing, a, uh, I, providing an isolation between the voltage source and your microphone. So assuming a constant value for VB, maybe around three, 700 to three, 800 millivolt for this, this biasing, we can solve for both IB and IC and determine the terminal voltages of the transistor, which we already did. So when you have this type of resistor biasing using RB, if we can assume this VB, we have to assume. That was a drawback. But if we can assume some constant value, we can solve this one, because this is a simple circuit for biasing. But then what we are trying to, uh, then again, this is a sensitive to the uh, beta variations, but this is a simple circuit. So then we will be using a simple circuit for connecting the microphone. Then, even if with that one, if we connect like this, so we avoided some issues, and then we came up to here. Then we understood we will connect a bigger resistor here, so that this will be providing an isolation between source and the microphone. Then you have connected something like this. But then still, it will not be good. Why? Because many microphones exhibit a small low frequency resistance around 100 ohms. So this one got a 100 ohm resistor. And then what will happen is uh, when you connect your microphone, then here you are connecting to a 100 ohm to the ground. Then if you are connecting a 100 ohm to the ground, there is a problem. The problem is then your Vx will reduce. Your Vx equal to 100 ohm divided by 100 kilo ohm plus 100 ohm into 2.5 volt. Means what I, what I am talking about is uh, so we solved some issues in the biasing, but then still we got the problem. See, here what we did is, uh, OK, so directly shorting is not good. Initially, this is a number one case. 
you got a transistor amplifier, then you connected a microphone directly. <laughs> didn't work because you don't have biasing. Then what we did is uh, maybe we can go, we, will sh we said, okay, we need some VB. Maybe then you shot at this point with this point. Then that is the second case. So second case is, maybe this is the second case. So this is a direct shot. So this is the second case. In the second case, you just shot at this point, this point, this oil right here. So you shot at. Then what happened? Oh, it's not solving. You are getting forward bias, but then the signal, the variations are killed by this uh, constant uh, voltage source here. Then what you did is uh, you connected some resistance between a suitable one, maybe 100 kilo ohm. So maybe that is a third case. Then you connected this one. But then before connecting this one, you connected uh, 200 kilo ohm. And then what you got is uh, you got some enough biasing, required biasing. But then the problem is uh, when you connected this microphone, but still this is not good, this is not good, but still this is also not good. Why? Why? Because this one got an output impedance that is around 100 ohm. Then previously with the 100 kilo ohm, you might be setting some value, VCC, some voltage here. But then when you connect this 100 ohm here to the ground, then you are going to get a voltage divider or a resistor divider is formed and then your voltage here it will be reduced. So when you connect to this one microphone directly, because microphone got a 100 ohm output impedance that is connecting to the ground, then this point voltage will reduce. So that's what I have shown here. So when the voltage will reduce, then we can find out how much it will reduce. So that is equal to 100 ohm divided by 100 kilo ohm plus 100 ohm equal to 2.5 volt because that is a VCC, which you can see 2.5 millivolt. Previously, you got some good voltage here with 100 kilo ohm, but then when you connect to this microphone directly because of this output impedance 100 ohm, then your VX will become 2.5 millivolt. When you get 2.5 millivolt, again, it is not going to help you because here it is not forward biased. So then, so what you will do then? So you came up with this strategy, it's not working. Then what you will do? So the, I'll go back to my uh, drawing. So this is the third scenario. So you came up to here, see, first didn't work out, second didn't work out, then the third didn't work out, then what will you do? How can we solve this one? Yeah, so we can connect a simple capacitor here. Because if you connect a capacitor here, then that will avoid the problem, because then the capacitor will block the DC from here coming here. Because you, you got, now what is happening is, uh, you got 100 ohm, because that is output impedance, uh, that is from the microphone. Then you got a capacitor, then you got 100 kilo ohm, see, this part. And then that is connected to the VCC. But then for DC, capacity impedance equal to 1 pi, 2 pi, FC, F equal to 0 for DC, so that equal to infinity. So this part is isolated for DC. So then the, for DC, if you are getting, uh, some volt here, maybe 0 0.7 volt or something you are getting, then even if you connect this 100 ohm, nothing is going to happen to this 0 0.7 volt. But then for the signal, for the signal definitely this will be affecting because uh, see, this uh, capacity is shorted. But then for the signal that will affect, then what you can do is you can increase the gain and compensate the signal part. But then transistor is now in the bias region because the capacitor will block these two region and then here. So the signal will pass through the capacitor but the DC will be isolated so that there is no potential voltage divider and then uh, you can get the voltage. So that is called a coupling capacitor. So this is an example of a bad input connection. And then, uh, yeah, finally, what we will do is because of this uh, small uh, microphone uh, output impedance, then we will go for a coupling capacitor. So when you put the coupling capacitor, what happens is you are isolating the DC part. So the AC signal pass can pass through but then DC, then it is not forming the coupling capacitor. Uh, sorry, this, the coupling capacitor is preventing uh, forming a voltage divider. So because capacity impedance equal to 1 by 2 pi FC, so capacitor isolates the bias network from the microphone at DC, but shorts the microphone to the amplifier at high frequencies. But then there is also a problem. When you connect a capacitor like this, uh, if you have studied a filter theory, this is forming a filter here. So when you connect a capacitor in parallel, how many of you studied filters, some basic filters, RC, LC, low pass, high pass, band pass, yeah. Yeah, when you connect a capacitor, then it is forming here, it's a high pass filter. So this will block low frequencies and then pass high frequencies. So that are the complications. So you solve something, 
then you are getting another problem. Then you have to be careful with the value of the capacitor because your frequency, your signal might have so many frequencies. So you don't want a capacitor sorting out the frequencies because then what the capacitor does is uh, low frequencies will be attenuated more, high frequencies will be passing through. So that issue will come. So that's the reason this capacitor you should be selected properly. But then we need that capacitor. Then people also do, when you have these type circuits, you can do two types of analysis. So now this is an amplifier circuit, and then this, uh, this will definitely amplify the signal. Obviously the circuit is sensitive to beta, but apart from that part, this will work. So when you have this circuit, sometimes people will say, okay, you do DC analysis. Then somebody will say, you do AC analysis or smart signal analysis. So then what do you mean by DC analysis? DC analysis means uh, it is performed to determine the operating point in the absence of signals, which we already, we already did several times. When you don't connect the signal, that is called a DC analysis. Then we do DC analysis to find out what is the value of VC, DC, VC, what is a DC collector current. Then we want to find out whether transistor is in the active region. So that is called, uh, uh, it is performed to determine the operating point in the absence of signals and then obtain small signal parameters. Later, after we do DC analysis, we can find out the small signal parameters. For that, we'll be doing small signal analysis. Find the DC equivalent circuit. When you do DC analysis, the rule is find the DC equivalent circuit by replacing all the capacitors by open circuit and inductors by short circuit. So this is kind of a opposite of small signal model. In the small signal, you short all the capacitors. So here you keep all the capacitors open and the inductors you short it. So in this circuit, if you want to do DC analysis, then if you do the same thing, see, you are getting this circuit because you are opening, you are keeping the capacitor open because that is a rule. Then you can write down the equations, IB equal to VCC minus VEB by RB, and then uh, you can get IC value, then you can get uh, VY or uh, VC. Then we know that that value, VY or VC should be greater than or equal to VB to avoid saturation, which we already did. I'm just teaching you because the terminology, when you have an amplifier circuit with a capacitor, with signal, then you, you can do DC analysis first and then you set to this RB and RC and then make sure that your amplifier is in the operating region. Then you will connect your signal and then you can find out the small signal uh, you can find out small signal parameters such as voltage gain. So that's what people do when you have a complete circuit. So this one we already did it before connecting the signal in the previous lectures. Now we have given a name. You can do the same thing from the complete circuit. Then what we are doing is we call it as a DC analysis because we are not taking into account the signal. The aim of the DC analysis is uh, setting the value of RB and RC, even putting a proper VCC to make sure that you got uh, your transistor operating in the active region. So then, what we will do is, uh, first we will do DC analysis. So our aim is uh, making this amplifier, and then we have solved some issues uh, at the beginning with the biasing in the input. And then we have done the DC analysis, and then we have decided we varied the value of RB, we varied the value of RC, and then we found out VC equal to 1.5. So when you don't have any signal, you got VC equal to 1.5 signal, 1.5 volt. That is your VC. Now what we are going to do is uh, here, this is the same circuit, and then uh, we can do with small signal analysis. Because here now we already set uh, VC equal to 1.5 volt, and then that will make sure that uh, this voltage is higher than this voltage so that uh, the transistor is in the operating region. Next, what we will be doing is small signal analysis. In the small signal which we already discussed, what is small signal? Small signal model. Sources are set to zero and is used to study the response of the circuit to small signals and compute parameters such as gain, output impedance. Means we are studying the response of the circuit with respect to a changing signal. Then we will be putting capacitor short. We already studied constant voltage sources. We will be grounding. Then uh, replace all the capacitors by short circuits, inductors by open circuit, DC voltage sources by ground connections and DC current sources by open circuit. Then we can get small signal, the voltage gain. And then why I have shown this one is, uh, there are two things, because when you have a complete amplifier circuit, so this you will be designing. Like when you design an amplifier, what you will be thinking is, okay, I got a microphone, and then I want to amplify the signal of the microphone, then I'm going to design a simple circuit, I got a transistor, then you will be designing. So after drawing only, you will calculate all the values. and. Uh, 
the, nobody will calculate the values before the circuit is designed. You know what I mean? Then you will be designing something like this. Okay, I got my microphone. I will put a coupling capacitor. Then I got RB. I got this transistor data sheet. Is I, I have got the data sheet. Then I will put some BCC. Then I will find RC. Then I will find RB. You know, this is what you will be first designing on the paper. Then you will be doing the first step, DC analysis. Then what you will be doing is uh, you follow the DC analysis. DC analysis means uh, just to remove the signal. And then uh, if you got a capacitor, put it as open. If you got an inductor, short circuit. Then you will be doing all the parameters. You will be finding out, uh, you will be varying this RB, RC, and then you will make sure that you write down the equation, and then you will find out VY, and then we will make sure that this condition is met. So that you will do by varying RB and RC. After that, what you will be doing is you, you, you can find out the small signal. By applying these rules, you can find out the small signal, and then you can derive the gain of the circuit. And then I have done the analysis by inspection here just to show you that. We can find out the gain. We already derived the expression for gain, which is equal to V out by V in equal to minus GM into RC. We did something in you know, a similar circuit. And then V out by V in with early effect. What will happen is RC parallel RO because you take into account RO and then uh, that is with early effect. So then your R out will become RC parallel RO. When you don't have early effect, RO equal to infinity. So these things we already discussed, R into what is the input impedance. So here what is the input impedance means, uh, see, by analysis, by instruction, we can easily see RB, that is coming in parallel with R pi. So that is the reason RB parallel RB, the input impedance. Yeah, so when you have a signal to amplify, then we will be thinking, okay, what is the value of the input signal? and then how much gain we needed, what is output value, voltage required, then we will be finding a suitable transistor. After getting a suitable transistor, then we will be drawing the circuit. And then after drawing the circuit, we will be doing the DC analysis first, and then we will be doing AC analysis. That's how we, we will design the circuit. But in most of the time, what will happen is, uh, when you design the amplifier, people often don't do the small signal model in the breadboarding, because you do the DC analysis, and then you connect your signal and then vary the values. But then this type of small signal analysis will be doing when you are doing maybe chip level designs. Otherwise, in the discrete cases, most of the time you don't do this type of small signal analysis. You do only DC analysis and set your circuit in the operating region, and then you connect your signal. And then you can vary some values like RC and increase again. You know what I meant? But the small signal analysis, the second part is important when you design a chip level uh, uh, design, when you design a CMOS chip, we will be doing this step analysis. Now what we will do is we are going to the next uh, uh, topology that is called a common base amplifier. So what is mean by common base? In the common base topology, base is common to collector and uh, emitter. And then we connect your signal to emitter. So that is called a common base topology. So far what we did is we connected our signal to base. But now base is common. So that is called a common base topology. So before going to common base topology, I will ask you some questions. So in the emitter, so in the common emitter topology, what we did is this is our common emitter topology. So here RC, this is grounded. Then we connected our signal here. So that is our common emitter topology, C. In the common base, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to connect our signal here. And then, this is your RC, so this is your VCC, this is your RC. So this is your RC, this is your VCC. And then here we will be providing some biasing because we need to provide some biasing. So you are going to connect your signal here in the emitter. So that is called a common base. Then, question for you. So I am going to connect my signal to the emitter here in the common base topology. So when I connect the signal to the base, we know that uh, IC equal to beta times IB. But then here, my question is, what is the maximum current gain I can get in the common base? Infinity. Zero. One. So in the common emitter topology, 
the maximum current gain I can get is 1 because here IC equal to beta times IB. But then here what you are doing is uh, you are connecting signal to the emitter. Then you are varying the emitter current. So your emitter current is approximately equal to collector current actually. Actually your emitter current which is equal to yeah, IC plus IB. So actually you, get, you don't get uh, even one. Maximum value you can get is uh, when you vary IE, you get only small variation in IC. You know what I mean? So the maximum gain you can get in the common current gain. I'm not talking about a voltage gain, current gain. The maximum current gain you can get in the common based topology is equal to one. That is one thing. But we, we get always less than one. But then we use this for amplifying voltage amplification not current amplification, voltage amplification. So then, so the, you will see amplifiers, uh, you, will, you will see voltage amplifier, then some people often talk about a power amplifier. So what is the difference between a power amplifier and a voltage amplifier? So in the power amplifier, most of the time they amplify the current, means that is a power amplifier. If you amplify the current, that is called a power amplifier. If you are amplifying the voltage, that is called voltage amplifier. So in the here, actually, you can't use this topology for actually power amplification because you, don't, you can't amplify the current. Then another one, another important aspect is uh, in order to understand the biasing in the common base topology, maybe you should be, so this one I, I have connected, the own voltage of this diode is 0 0.7 volt. So this is something different. So this one is, uh, let, it, let it be there. And then here I have connected 0.7 volt, and then here I have grounded. So this is in the forward bias region. Now my question is, I want to ground this part. Can I make it uh, forward bias? But my requirement is I want to ground this part. Then what will I do? Yeah, yeah. So you can connect a minus 7 volt here. See. So this is the positive. So if I connect a minus 0 0.7 volt here, minus side, still it will be the forward bias region. Even I can say by connecting only positive, I can make it because here I connect maybe 2 volt. And then what I will do is, uh, so this 2 volt, here I will connect 1.3 volt. Still, so this will be the forward bias region. You know what I mean? Different ways we can make forward biasing. Yeah, now I, I can. Uh, ask you a question about the four, uh, common base. So when we connect a common base uh, amplifier, we will be doing something like this. See, we got RC, we got VCC, we will be taking output from here, then we will be biasing the amplifier because we need still the biasing rules are same. Whenever you wanted to use a transistor as an amplifier, your base and emitter should be forward biased and then uh, base and connector should be reverse biased. Then you have connected your input signal here. Then, here there is an issue, because when you go back uh, to my drawing, you have to be careful with the biasing, see, maybe you have connected 2 volt here, and then uh, I'm going to vary this to 0.8 volt, then I'm going to connect a varying signal here, so this is a varying signal, this signal will be varying something like this. In one case, this will become upper 0.8 volt or maybe 0.4 volt. So here it is 0.4 volt, here it is 0.4 volt. So my question is, uh, when it is rising to 0.4 volt, when it comes here, whether this diode will be on or off? Yeah, yeah, because then you, you are losing the forward bias. But when it comes down, it is fine. Then if you want to keep this diode always on, your, your DC voltage requirement is, uh, you have to find out what is the maximum voltage you will be finding. So that is equal to 0.4 volt plus your bias voltage 0.7. So then this should be, this should be, you will be connecting around 1.1 volt. You know what I meant? Otherwise when the signal is varying, you will lose the forward biasing. So same is applicable to common, common base amplifier. Because you are connecting signal here, during the positive cycle, what will happen is you, you got positive voltage here, then you are again increasing the positive voltage here. So if you don't connect the proper uh, voltage, required voltage level here, you will lose the forward voltage. So because of that, what we will do is, uh, 
uh, if V input equal to 500 millivolt, V input, so that is our input signal variation, then your VB, what is a VB you connect is VB plus 500 millivolt, your signal plus VB on, like I discussed in the, in the case of uh, diode. Then applications, then you might wonder why we need a common bias amplifier, we are, are we not happy with the common emitter amplifier? Definitely there are amplifier, there are applications, one is a pre-amplifier. So pre-amplifier means it is an amplifier, but then a pre-amplifier always work with uh, very noisy signals and also pre-amplifier sometimes has to do some impedance matching. For example, you have your mobile phone, from the mobile phone antenna, your signal you have received, then there it will be going directly to a pre-amplifier, then it will be amplified, because pre-amplifier is an amplifier that will uh, amplify noisy signals, that doesn't have very big amplification actually, but then you will go to the amplifier stages and further amplify. So pre-amplifier design we can use uh, uh, common bias amplifier for moving coil microphones, then high frequency amplifiers, current buffers, it has a current gain of approximately unity. So current buffer, you know voltage buffer, so we add a buffer stage, then we want to isolate two regions in the electronics, then we will add a buffer stage, but then you don't want a gain in the buffer stage. Then if it is a voltage buffer, then the gain of the voltage buffer is one, buffer stage. So if you want to make a current buffer, because you got a maximum current gain one here, so you can use as a current buffer. Then I have made a comparison between common emitter and common base. Voltage gain, moderate, minus RC by RE, common base you get high gain. Current gain, again moderate beta, that is the value you get it, but then low, less than one for common base. Input resistance, common emitter very high, but common base very small. We can, we will look into it. Output resistance high and then output uh, resistance high in both cases. So you can see here the only difference is in the current gain. Two, two, two places you find difference. So this part is okay, moderate high, not much difference. We can even make it high. Current gain, it is uh, almost equal to one means maximum value. So that uh, common emitter stage you cannot make for current buffer. If you are making a current buffer, then you can use this uh, common bias amplifier. Another one is input resistance. Though we said uh, we need a very high input impedance for the amplifier, obviously that is ideal, but then in some cases that is not practical for the voltage amplifier. For the voltage amplifier, what we discussed is uh, when you have input impedance, high input impedance, so you got your amplifier, this is your amplifier, and then this is your output impedance of your signal source, and then what happens is, uh, here you got your input impedance of the amplifier and then if you can make this one infinity, then that is good. Why? Because then you, you don't use any voltage here as a drop. So for the voltage amplifier, we want to have a infinite input impedance. But then here for the common base, we see low impedance. Sometimes we need low impedance. There is an example, you got an antenna. So this is your antenna. So this is an antenna. So your signal is received in the antenna, then you want to connect to an amplifier. So in that case, what is happening is, this antenna got a 50 ohm impedance for the signal. So this is received by electromagnetic radiation, it is coming, then it is detected. But then this antenna got a 50 ohm impedance. But then, if you connect a very high input impedance amplifier here, very high input impedance, close to infinity, then you will not lose any signal. But then if this signal is high frequency, maybe say one gigahertz, if that is a frequency, this signal will come and reflect back, you know, the reflection transmission line. So impedance matching is a problem. So this 50 ohm should be, here also it should be 50 ohm. Otherwise what will happen is, your signal will be reflected back. So there will be high frequency reflections. You might have studied a transmission line. Then voltage amplifier is not a good option, means common emitter stage, because common emitter stage you got a very high input impedance. Then we are happy to relax this rule. Maybe we need an amplifier with a low input impedance, but then obviously we are losing some signal, that is fine. It's much better to lose some signal and amplify later rather than, you know, get not getting nothing. So that is the reason we came up with the idea of a common bias amplifier. And then common bias amplifier got a low input impedance, and then we make use of that one for applications where we need to do some impedance matching. So in common base topology, where the base terminal is biased with a fixed voltage and emitter fed with a signal and the collector is the output. And then which I already discussed in communication, a transmission line is a specialized cable or other structure 
designed to carry alternating current of radio frequency which I already drawn that is current with a frequency high enough that their wave nature must be taken into account. It's like a transmission line. And then this is an example uh, uh, where you know, people used it for 75 to 150 megahertz from the antenna the signal is coming received and then there is a capacitor. This capacitor is for isolating the bias DC signal coming to this side only passes the high frequency signal and then see this is going to the emitter directly. So this is an example of a uh, receiver antenna. So to avoid reflections you need impedance matching which we already discussed. If you don't have impedance matching if this is an amplifier, if you don't have the impedance matching here with respect to the transmission line, then there will be reflection, signal will reflect back. Common base stage is low input impedance can be used to create a match with 50 ohm. So that is advantage. Then we will study the gain, expression for the gain uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.